In today's video, we're going to be discussing macronutrients, more specifically carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which means we're now getting into the bulk of the food your clients consume, so it's pretty important. Macronutrients influence our ability to digest food, absorb nutrients, produce hormones, and they impact our immune function, cell structure and function, our body composition, and metabolic function. And we'll learn about how carbohydrates, fats, and proteins play a role in each of these processes. It's important to explain to clients that not all carbohydrates are created equal. You may have some clients who feel that all carbohydrates are bad, but what if their workouts are suffering? What if they're losing muscle because they're eating such a low carbohydrate diet? You can help guide them towards minimally processed carbohydrates that are higher in fiber to prevent these scenarios from happening. For example, beans, which are also rich in fiber and protein along with carbohydrates, will provide long lasting energy, prevent blood sugar swings, aid in elimination, and help keep us fuller for longer so we end up eating a reasonable amount of food. What does fat do for us? It provides us with energy. It's the most energy dense macronutrient with nine calories of energy per gram. As well, fat is a primary energy source for kids under the age of 14 and a secondary energy source for adults, not to mention a crucial energy source for endurance athletes. Fat also helps make and balance steroid hormones, such as our sex hormones and corticosteroid hormones. It also forms our cell membranes, our brains, and our nervous system. Remember the phospholipid bilayer? Fat also helps to transport fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and it gives us two fatty acids that we can't make on our own, the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. But how much protein do you and your clients need? For sedentary, generally healthy adults, they'll need about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass. This means 55 grams for a 150-pound person and 72 grams for a 200-pound person. However, it doesn't mean that the average person is getting quality protein just because they are getting enough for their body to have protein turnover and prevent protein malnutrition. That's the bare minimum. Our protein requirements go up if we are training hard, have a physical job, are injured, sick, or recovering from surgery, and if we are losing protein due to chronic physical stress or poor digestion. For an athlete, the American College of Sports Medicine and Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body mass, whereas the International Society of Sports Nutrition recommends 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass. You've just learned a lot of information, but all you really need to discuss with your clients are these five things. One, how much food they're eating each day, and if they are eating the right amounts for their goals. Two, how they are eating. For example, are they eating slowly and enjoying their food? Three, why are they eating each day? For example, are they eating when they're actually hungry? Four, what are they eating each day? For example, do they consume mostly minimally processed foods from all categories of macronutrients? And five, are they doing all of this consistently? If not, Keep it simple and focus on how much, why, and what they're eating first, and whether they're doing it consistently. And don't forget to keep the big picture in mind.